Okay. Welcome everyone to the class on Minister's Foundation. Good to see all of you online students. Thank you for joining class. And welcome to all our in-person students as well. Thank you. And um, also to our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture uh, later on. We'll begin class. So uh, before we begin, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Can I ask one of the online students to lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can you please unmute your mics and lead us in prayer, please? Father God, we come before you this morning. We want to worship you. We want to thank and praise you for who you are and what you do for us, Lord. We thank and praise you for this day. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Your mercies are new every day, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given each one of us to come before your holy presence, Lord, to come before you, to come and learn from your word. Lord, we commit this session into your hands. Lord, Holy Spirit, we ask your presence here. We ask that you would anoint our teacher this morning and let your words flow through her, Lord. We thank and praise you for this session. We pray for everyone in the class, the in-person online students and all of us, Lord. We pray that our spiritual minds would be opened, that our understanding would be opened to receive from what you have to teach us, Lord. Thank and praise you, Lord, and we pray your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sonia. Good to hear your voice. Miss seeing you two weeks at church. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm well last week, uh, Pastor. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, so today we'll um, continue with the study of um, uh, the publication Code of Honor. We'll be studying Chapter 5, um, all about preaching. How many of you like to preach? Good, good number of you. How about our, okay? Okay, we can see some thumbs up. So good to see some of you like to preach. Okay, why do, why do you think we give so much of priority to teaching God's word? Why is so much of priority given to teaching God's word? Or what happens when God's word is preached? Oh, uh, encourage people, okay? What happens when God's word is preached? You all can unmute your mics and answer. People are saved. Thank you, Lucy. It's a command of Jesus, yes. Okay, anything else? Faith is increased, yes. To correctly uh, divide the word of God, to understand accurately. Okay, we help people understand God's word when God's truth is correctly um, taught. Yes. Okay, so people are edified. People, um, preaching helps us transform the lives of people. Okay, and uh, helps them to learn more about the kingdom of God. Thank you, Andrew. Helps in salvation for the unsaved. Yes. Um, Daniel says the character of God can be portrayed. Yes. Um, all right, people also receive healing uh, and also receive deliverance. People are saved, right? Um, and um, people are established in the word of God, okay? Deepu says giving deeper true knowledge of God. Yes, people come to a deeper truth of the knowledge of God, who God is. Sanjay says God's word is alive and active. It's the same yesterday, today, and for ever amen okay so people are established in the word of god what happens when people are established in the word of god what happens when people are established when we preach people say people are established in the word of god what happens when people are established in the word of god They, became, they become more firm in their, and stable in their faith, in their maturity, in their walk with God. Okay, people grow deeper, yes, deeper in their faith, in their walk with God. Also, they are not, uh, yeah, spiritual growth happens. Yes, John Bressy, uh, they spiritually grow. Uh, Akhil says we are better equipped to handle day-to-day -day life. Yes, very true. Anything else? An important thing is people are not driven away by all false doctrines and false teachings, right? 
There's so much of false doctrines, false teachings. People can easily get carried away. That's why preaching of God's word is so important. Okay. Now, um, those of us who preach God's word, is uh, is it a privilege? It's, is it more a privilege or more a responsibility? What do you think? Yes, it's more a preaching God's word is more a responsibility than just a privilege, right? It's more a responsibility. Thank you, Akil and Lucy and Daniel for your response. Um, you know, it's not just a fancy position, but it's uh, something that it is, like Akil says, it's a calling. It's a higher calling. And it's also a willingness to live by that higher calling, right? Because when we preach and teach, we are more accountable, right, to God and to man. And people look at us and we fall short of what we preach and teach. They will point fingers at us. Does not give credibility to the word of God, what we are preaching and teaching. And people will not want to listen to any of our messages and sermons because of our lifestyle, because we are not living what we are preaching ourselves. And also those of us who preach will be, what does the word of God say? James chapter 3 verse 1, what does it say? Those of us who preach God's word, there will be stricter measures of judgment for us. So when God judges us, there will be stricter measures which he's going to use. So that should not stop us. Should that stop us from preaching God's word? Huh? So, you know, we say, oh, I don't want to preach God's word because God is going to you know, judge me in more stricter ways and stricter measures. Should that stop us? No, because it's a command. Like uh, I think uh, John uh, said, you know, it's a command. Preaching is a command that we need to uh, obey. Okay. Um, so look at what, um, you know, uh, Paul says to Titus. He leaves Titus, a very young man, in the island of Crete and uh, to look oversee the churches there at Crete and look at what he says in to uh, Titus or writes to Titus in Titus chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 can somebody read that please Titus chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 you know married sister yes go ahead sister get rude yeah in all things showing yourself to be a a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, and incorruptibility. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent may be ashamed, having nothing evil to say of you. Yes. So here Paul is um, telling Timothy that, you know, um, that the standard we maintain in the ministry of teaching God's word, okay, so there's a standard, a high standard that we have to maintain and how we teach God's word, okay? So the first thing what he says is, what is he saying? Showing? What should we show? In doctrine. Good work. First one is? Integrity, yes. We need to show integrity. What is the meaning of integrity? Which means we need to teach God's word in truth without any error, without any mistakes, okay? And we need to teach the pure word of God, not mix God's word with some philosophies, with some, you know, stories and fables and myths and philosophies, but we need to teach the pure word of God in its purer uh, sense, okay? The next one is integrity. Next one, reverence. How do you teach God's word in reverence? Reverence is the fear of God. Sorry, sir? Reverence is fear of God. Yeah, the fear of God. So when we are preaching and teaching God's word, we don't use it very lightly, very cheaply. In a sense, we just don't say, you know, we don't read a scripture passage. And sometimes we see, you know, some people when they preach, they read a scripture passage, but nothing will come out of that scripture passage. It will just be about, 
where they went, what ministry they did, what they, how they uh, ministered, what happened, or some stories or some uh, things that happened. You know, they would just use some kind of philosophy, some poems, some uh, illustrations, you know, um, and there would be nothing from the word of God. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to... Um, when we teach God's word, not just teach it very lightly, casually, you know, just to feel, uh, be cool in front of people, uh, just to feel, uh, look nice in front of people, just to feel accepted. So sometimes we can use, you know, uh, you know big, big words, uh, you know, styles that we use and all of those things. All of those is important. Illustrations are important. Also, the style that we speak, everything adds to our preaching. It's all very important. But we should not... Uh, you know, get carried away in that where people are not given reverence to God's word. Okay, so when we teach, we need to give them a, a reverence and awe that God's word is the truth. We need to uphold God's word with truth and with reverence. The next one. What's the next one in the list? Incorruptibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, incorruptibility means we don't corrupt the word of God. How can we corrupt the word of God? When we preach, how can we corrupt God's word? With false doctrine. False doctrines, yes. And when we preach and we are not working according to what we preach. Yes, when we preach and teach and we don't practice it in our own lives, okay? So we can, feel, we can preach... Um, Messages which make people very excited, you know, feel good, feel comfortable, feel happy, you know, all of that. And they will just enjoy the message, but ask them what they learn from God's word. There'll be nothing. So they'll tell you the stories you told them. They'll tell you, you know, all the nice things you said. They'll be very excited. But has any transformation change happened? No. So when we preach God's word, we can use all of these stories, illustrations, and all of those to enhance the truth in God's word. But the, the main message, the main meat, the center of it should be God's word. And that should be, you. and you can use illustrations to explain uh, the truth from God's word. But always going back to the word of God. Okay. So, uh, and then the last one is, what is the last one Paul tells Titus? Sound speech, yes, you know, uh, means in the way that we speak, we must be blameless uh, uh, when we preach and teach so that people don't find fault in what we are preaching and teaching and even in our own lives, okay? Now, what should motivate us to preach and teach God's word? What motivates us to preach and teach God's word? What is the motivation? What should be our motivation in preaching and teaching God's word? Should be to impart the truths and revelations in God's word. And what should be our motivation even as we preach and teach? What should we look for? Yeah, that people's lives will be transformed. Life transformation. Okay. So our motivation should not be to impress people. Okay, our motivation should be that people's life, that yes, to impact the life of people. Thank you, Daniel. Okay, and so we should make sure that we don't dilute the word of God with just philosophies, nice popular thoughts, you know, uh, and all of those things, but stay true to ministering the uncompromised and the undiluted word of God. Okay, now when you um, teach God's word, uh, sometimes it's easy to talk about, you know, specific topics like love, faith, grace, you know, uh, hope. What are the, some of the famous to easy topics that we always choose? Forgiveness, love, yes. Sorry? Blessings, prosperity, healing, okay, yes. All of those things are something that we can, you know, very easy to teach. But what are some of the difficult topics that we find challenging or difficult to teach and preach in church or to, you know, people? Something that brings correction. Yes, 
very very difficult like sexual purity you know uh, uh, infidelity in marriage you know um, forgiving others can be also very challenging how to make sacrifices obedience you know personal character and all of these some are some challenging topics so should we speak about these things holiness yes uh, angeline says holiness akil says salvation and repentance should we speak these topics yes okay when we speak these topics how should we speak these topics or how should we preach these topics with love okay what else in a gentle way right yes how can we be gentle not being judgmental not condemning people not putting down people you know um but we need to teach them with the goodness of god paul says in romans the goodness of god leads to repentance okay akil says we need to preach and teach with boldness and clarity and give reference not just reference but references to god's word thank you akil and daniel says first we must experience these topics that means we must live it out yes important okay and also we need to teach it in a non condemning non judgmental way but in love okay and also with the goodness of god because romans paul says the goodness of god leads to repentance okay so that must be very very important and also when we are teaching these topics we don't portray ourselves as preaching down on people that means i am perfect i have done all of these things hey you people you, know, you listen you all need to do it no we need to um, come to a level ground we're saying hey even i used to struggle with these things i went through these challenges i also found these difficult uh, but you know we are here with with god's grace to you know learn and to equip and you know to help each other okay now um a paul writing to timothy in second timothy chapter 2 was 15 can somebody read that please second timothy chapter 2 was 15 second timothy chapter 2 was 15 be diligent to present yourself approved to god a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth yes amen thank you so here uh, we see that paul is writing to timothy and he says that you should rightly divide the word of truth what does it mean to rightly divide the word of truth what it means to rightly divide the word of truth does it mean you divide the word of truth means look at what it says in the old testament and new testament or what god says or what jesus says what it means what does it mean to rightly divide the word of truth means we need to break it down uh, yeah akil says we need to put it in context yes thank you also we need to you know break it down sim- make it simpler you know simplify the truth interpret it make it understandable for people you know without uh, diluting it or mixing it with other things okay the philosophies philosophies of this world or you know some things that you know generally we just know but not, not diluting it okay and also we need to not uh, be very careful that we don't you know um uh preach based on our own understanding and our own imaginations when we are preaching and teaching it's important when we read the word of god that we use the tools of biblical interpretation and we just don't take one verse and preach it from that but we need to look at that verse in context who wrote it to whom was it written why was it written what culture what context what is the reason uh you know uh, which kind of audience where which place okay so the context we need yes like akil says we need to put things in the context we need to read um understand and also we need to interpret that scripture in the light of the rest of scripture the whole of scripture so for example people have taken various verses from the bible and they have misinterpreted it so one can be you know that uh, you know where it says paul says there is prophecies they will cease so people say now there is only in the early church there was the the gifts of the spirit were manifest nowadays you know we don't have to 
think about uh, manifesting the gifts of the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it ceased. But that is misinterpretation, okay? Also, women have to be, Paul says, women have to be silent in church. They cannot preach or teach, you know? Women cannot, um, you know, uh, uh, come with braided hair and expensive, uh, you know, jewelry and all. So we need to understand those verses in context. So we need to be very careful when we are interpreting scripture, we need to uh, interpret that scripture in the rest of, on the light of the rest of other scripture, the whole word of God. What does this word mean? What is Jesus saying here? Or what is God saying here in the light of the rest of scripture? Okay. Now, when you are invited to preach and teach, um, or you are, uh, many of you, some of you must be pastors. When you are um, in, you know, wanting to preach and teach, how do you choose the topics? Suppose you're a pastor and you're preaching and teaching in your church. How do you choose your topic for that month or for the year? Or you're invited somewhere and you want to preach and teach. How do you choose which passage, what you have to preach? Any thoughts? First, you will pray. Ask God what to. Very good. Ask God what you have to preach. Okay. Why is it important to ask God what you have to preach? Why can't you just preach what you have been learning, what God has been teaching you, or what you think is going to be really a good, your good message, pull out one good message of yours and preach and teach that, or something on love because you're very confident of preaching that topic. Why is it important for you to listen to what God is saying? Akil says God's message to God's people is better and effective when we do what God says, yes. Because actually God knows what is the need of that congregation or that group that you are ministering or preaching to. So God will, even if you're a pastor, God knows what is the need of your people in that season, okay? So God will tell you the topic. He will lead you to the scripture passage, okay? John bless, he says he knows about people that at the right time, what they want. Yes, what they need. What So when we are sensitive to what God is leading us, you know, and we preach what people need, then people are going to listen to you. Okay. So when we are preaching or teaching people what they felt need is, people will connect with you. They want eat. They want just walk away from church. But they listen because, hey, this person is teaching or teaching me what I really am going through, what I really need. So it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit. Even in your Bible college, when you are, you know, some of you get turns to preach here in the morning in your devotion, ask God, you know, what you want to, what he wants to impart to the rest of the other students. Okay. So when you do that, you know, you can preach in two people's hearts and they can receive God's word. Even as you are a pastor, you can pray and ask God for, you know, what he wants you to preach the next two months, three months, and he will uh, lead you and um, guide you, okay? Now, uh, we are all excited to, you know, um, receive new uh, revelations and truths from God's word, yes or no? You know, when we receive new revelations and truths from God's word, it's very important for us, um, you know, um, uh, to, uh, it's very nice for us to preach and teach that as well and to share it with others. But when we receive new revelations, what do, how do we act on it? Before we preach and teach that, what should we do? We learned, right, about when we receive prophecies, when we hear from word, God's word, Remember inner witness, voice of the Holy Spirit, stirring in your heart. What are some of the things that we need to do when you receive a new revelation? Yeah, you need to validate it. Thank you, Lucy. You need to validate it. How do you validate it? How do you validate it? What are the two primary ways you validate? You check with the with word of God. Yes, thank you, Lucy. Sorry, get rude. We need confirmation. Confirmation from whom? Confirmation from the Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you. 
And thank you, Lucy. Yes, you need to go back to the Word of God, see if what revelation truth you're receiving is correct with the rest of the whole scripture and also with the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to impart the truth for you. Because when the Holy Spirit is actually revealing God's Word, He's a teacher, right? He's the one who's inspired all the authors in the Bible to write everything that they have written. So we have a great teacher living inside us. And who is that? The Holy Spirit. Yes. So he teaches us the truth. So, you know, when he reveals something to us, he will reveal according to God's word and not, and, uh, and also that is in line with what God wants us to know. So we need to, sometimes we can even think what we are receiving mentally or emotionally. We think it's the Holy Spirit speaking. So we need to validate it with God's word. And also with the manifest word of God. Who is the manifest word of God? Who is the manifest word of God? The word became flesh. Who became flesh? Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Gertrude. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lucy. It's Jesus, the word that became flesh. So we should also look at it in the, you know, in the light of what Jesus has preached and te taught and how he has lived this life. Okay. Now, sometimes when you find something is incorrect or you're not sure, you can always go to, you know, men and women of God who are strong in the word of God and receive from them and ask them to uh, help you whether the revelation that you've received is correct. Okay. We also need to stay current and avoid theological digressions. When preaching and teaching, you know, we need to stay with the present current move of God. Okay, for example, in the 1900s, when there was the Azusa Street Revival, you know, there was a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which gave rise to the Pentecostal movement. Uh, okay, and uh, when the Pentecostal movement started, many people for hours, you know, they were just present just to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so nowadays, do we have to tarry or press in for a long time for to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? What do you think? No, you know, sometimes when we just have the baptism of the Holy Spirit after church service, we just pray for people. They just, you know, flow in, in they start speaking in tongues. They just baptize. And also people just flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right? But earlier, they had to press. Okay? But nowadays, uh, you know, we don't have to do that, okay? Another example we can look from God's word is a man called Apollos. Apollos was, you know, a very learned man, a man who was very mighty in scripture. He knew God's word. Uh, scripture means, I'm talking about Old Testament, okay? He was very well-versed in the Old Testament. He was very eloquent in his speaking. He used to preach and teach in the synagogues. But he only used to preach and teach from the Old Testament scripture right up to the baptism of John. But he was very powerful in his teaching and he loved God very much. So, you know, this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, yes, um, you know, people, this, this couple was very, very powerful in um, building churches and ministering. You know, uh, they heard Apollos and they realized that, hey, he knows only past to an extent the truth right up to John the Baptist. So they, called him and they spoke to him about Jesus, his teaching and about uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we see that, you know, uh, Apollos received it and he again started mightily preaching and teaching. So sometimes, you know, we can live in the past, move of God, but we also need to be, we need to know what is the present of God, where God is. Yes, Paul, you have a question. I think Paul is in the wrong class. He's not supposed to be in this class. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, we see that we need to be current with the move of God, knowing what God is releasing in the world today. So what is the move of God in the world today? What do you think is the move of God in our world today? What do you think God is doing? What is the move of God? Online students, what's the move of Sal God, the current move of God? Salvation, sister, repentance, reconciliation, encountering, having an encounter with God. Yes, 
salvation has always been there, but I think it's more uh, a revival. Yes, uh, thank you, Sanjay. There's revival. There's, yes, an encountering. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, yes, being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, moving in signs and wonders. Because nowadays there's so much of a rise of uh, religions and their teaching and their philosophies. So people want to know um, the truth from which is the true, who is the true and living God. So, you know, our preaching and teaching should be attested with signs, miracles and wonders. And we are in the last days. Yes, Andrew says, Joel 2.28, you know, um, time when there's an outpouring of God's spirit, there'll be dreams and visions and, um, you know, um, uh, the move of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit mightily moving so that people can operate in these um, gifts. Okay, so... Uh, also, it's important for us when we're teaching God's word that we teach it in light of the rest of the truth in God's word, in scripture, okay? Now, sometimes if we overemphasize the truth, you know, it gives more importance than what God or scripture wants us to give importance to. So what do I mean by that, okay? For example, if we overemphasize blessing and prosperity, Okay, we're talking only blessing and prosperity without balancing it with sacrifice, giving and contentment, then that is overemphasizing blessing and prosperity. Okay, now if we emphasize grace, we are in a grace period, not like Old Testament where, you know, people are just falling down dead, God punishes them, the earth opens and they're swallowed or plague or whatever. If we overemphasize grace, Without emphasizing godly living, purity, and, re uh, and responsibility, that means our response that we need to also be pure, though we have the grace of God, we need to live in holiness and purity, which means we are not dividing the word of God correctly, okay? Um, also, when we dilute the word of God by saying that salvation is not just through grace by faith, but also through other ways, it's leading people astray okay um you know when we are just focusing on uh, you know on the science miracles and wonders without telling people that hey science miracles and wonders will follow when when will science miracles and wonders follow or when can we flow in mighty science miracles and wonders or when can we flow in the gifts of the spirit when can we flow in the gifts of the spirit or when can the gifts of the spirit be manifested in our lives when? Hello, when can the gifts of the Spirit be manifested in our lives? Or when can we see a great move of the gifts of the Spirit being? Yes, Sanjay says, when we seek His kingdom first and His righteousness. Yes, when we seek, seek intimacy with God. Remember chapter 1, we talked about our personal life. We said, that our ministry is an, is an overflow with our time in the secret place with God. The more we are intimate with God in the secret place, seeking God, you know, pursuing him more, that's when we can flow mightily. The anointing is greater. The power is greater. There's life transformation. There's a move of God. We can flow mightily in signs, gifts, and wonders. Okay? Um, also, sometimes... We overemphasize prophecy. Remember, we studied the chapter on prophecy, right? In receiving God's guidance. All of you, yes. Uh, Andrew says, personal relationship with God, our teacher, yes. Okay. Um, so we learn about prophecy, right? So sometimes prophetic words can also be tainted with, uh, you know, the person's own knowledge because or their own weaknesses or whatever. So it's important we test prophecies, okay? We learned that. So sometimes we can get so caught up in just prophesying without teaching people the right way of prophesying is really hearing from God. And we hear from God when we are very close and intimate with Him, okay? So all of these teachings which we are doing, we should not overemphasize while missing out the 
truth that is there. So even as we preach and teach grace and prophecy and flowing and gifts and, uh, and uh, performing mighty signs, miracles and wonders, there needs to be a balanced view, which means we need to speak that in the light of the rest of scripture and what is our responsibility. Okay. Um, now, when there is, um, you know, sometimes when there is a wrong doctrine that is happening in our city and people in our church or Bible study group, and you're the leader and they're all only talking about this. What do you do as a, uh, as a leader or as a pastor or as a Bible study group? In the Bible study group, after the Bible study, people are just talking about this or prayer fellowship, you know, they're just talking about the false teaching, the doctrine that is happening and how people are rushing to this place, that place. Uh, or as a pastor, you're hearing this. So how do you handle this? Should you preach the false teaching from the doctrine, from the pulpit? Why? Why shouldn't you preach it? Some people, what they do is they start preaching and teaching about the false teaching and doctrine. They said, hey, we are, I'm hearing all this from you people. Some of you are going to that preacher, that place, that crusade. You're listening to the messages from this man of God who's teaching all these wrong doctrines. What happens when you preach and teach the wrong doctrine that is happening in your city or town and the nation from the pulpit? What happens? Is it important for us to teach those wrong doctrines or talk about those wrong doctrines? Can we have some answers? Yes or no? Some of you are unsure. We shouldn't preach and teach. Sanjay says it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Okay, you need to preach and teach according to the word of God. Because when you preach and teach the false doctrine, you're giving people more excitement. Some of them who don't know will go and listen or they will go and they will want to find out. And some of them who are weak in their faith, what will happen? They will get carried away. So you un unnecessarily will give in publicity, advertisement. You know, so what should you do instead? Yes, we are called to preach and preach the truth as Jesus did. Okay, Andrew says. Andrew, not uh, disciple Andrew, but student Andrew from online class. We are called to preach and teach the truth that Jesus did. Yes. So when you hear false doctrines and false teachings and you're listening to that, what should you do is you should look at the, you should look at the false doctrines and you should look at what is the corresponding truth in the word of God and you need to teach the truth. So what happens when you teach people the truth? They will be able to apply the truth when they are faced with the wrong. Okay, they say, hey, pastor said this. In the Bible study, we stu studied this. So this preacher is saying this. The word of God is saying this. That means what they are saying is wrong. So don't publicize about by talking about the false doctrine. Teach the truth. Okay. So should we also, when we preach and teach, should we use the pulpit and God-given time to preach and teach God's word um, to flatter people, to get money, or uh, to uh, self-promotion? No, but we see some of them do this, right? Some of them preach and teach prosperity uh, and blessing so that, you know, and we tell them that they have to give more into the church, put more money, you know, uh, as tithes, as offering. And then after you're preaching, you take a special offering and, uh, you know, you tell people that you have to give according to what God's word has, you have received. And if people don't give next Sunday, your preaching will be about God's wrath. <laughs> God's judgment, not heeding to God's word, okay? So that is wrong. Don't use the pulpit, uh, you know, to uh, get more money, to promote yourself, how great, how good, how nice you are, but you need to teach God's word. Even if you are sharing from the pulpit as an example, as a personal example of what God did through your life, you need to be careful on how you're saying it so that God can receive the glory and not saying it in a way that you know you're promoting yourself okay so everything what we do 
not just what we see, we think, how we live, even our preaching, even our teaching should be out of a pure motive, out of a clean heart to glorify God and to actually preach and teach what God is doing so that we can encourage people. And even as you share your life stories with people, do it in a way that will give God the glory and people will want to say, hey, this pastor was able to do, she was able to do, he was able to do, why not me? So it should motivate people, okay? The next thing is don't give the devil the pulpit time. What does it mean? Don't give the devil the pulpit time. What do you think it means? Okay, before that, Daniel says, ma'am, what can we do if someone uses the pulpit for preaching a, a wrong word of God? Uh, what we can do is, you know, we can go to the preacher and maybe, you know, maybe take two or three along, uh, others along with you who would testify to the fact, you know, and tell them, you know, tell them what they have spoken and uh, don't do it in a way that you're going to judge them or condemn them, but tell them, you know, you know, this is what God's word says, the rest of scripture says. So what do you think? What do you think is the truth, you know? And, um, you know, if the person is willing to accept, it's good. If they're not willing to accept, you know, don't argue, don't fight with them. You know, just pray for them that the Holy Spirit would um, reveal the truth to them. Also, another thing we can do is we can pray before we uh, go and ask the Holy Spirit to minister to them. Does that help, Daniel? Okay, thank you. Good question. Okay. What do we mean by don't give the devil pulpit time? Does the devil want pulpit time? Does the devil want to preach and teach? Yeah, someone is saying yes. Yes. So how do we give uh, the devil pulpit time? Andrew says to boast about ourselves, keeping ourselves high and doing the work which God has given us. Instead of lifting up God, we try to put ourselves higher. Yes. Yes, Nelson, you want to say something? Maybe if you are giving someone time to preach and pulpit and instead of talking God's word, is going in personal life means maybe he's promoting his business and those other things uh, then what so yes some are promoting their own business uh, lucy says you know don't use your pulpit for other things than god's word sometimes you know people have used the pulpit and the word of god to teach and get against people who are talking about them they word gossip or there's a division there's one group talking against the pastor or against the leader and they are wanting to tell them all that you have kept in your mind, what you want to give them. And you don't have an uh, you know, occasion to do it. You use a pulpit time. And you think that is right? No, that is wrong, right? You know, you want people to give more money to the offering. You use uh, the pulpit time. You know, you want to speak ill of others. You know, that's not the right time to do it. You want to get back to people, not using the pulpit time for that. Sometimes you want to... Uh, you know, promote some business or some group or some polit politician or some uh, political, uh, you know, group, we use the pulpit, which is wrong, okay? It, pulpit is a place where God's word is to be taught in holiness and reverence and in awe, okay? Uh, look at what uh, the people did when, you know, when, when Nehemiah went to build the walls of Jerusalem, after building the walls of Jerusalem, you know, um, the Ezra, you know, he opens the book of the law. And when he opens the book of the law, you know, what do the people do? Yes, they bow down. They, they all stood up. They lifted their hands. They bowed their heads. And even some of them even fell prostrate. That was the awe and reverence for God's word. And it's important for us as teachers, whether you're a Sunday school teacher, youth uh, teacher, you know, uh, leading a Bible study, prayer group, a pastor, it's important for us to hold God's word in deep reverence and to draw people when you're preaching and teaching, not to yourself, but to the to God, the nature of God, the attributes of God, to his truth, you know, so that people can fall in love with God's word. You know why people don't read God's word? Most often, because they find God's word boring. 
some of them we don't read it because they don't understand the the mysteries the revelations the prophecies so use the pulpit time to preach and teach and you know uh, help them to fall in love with god's word okay a true minister it says just above the point do not cause division and offense in the body the true minister of god is one who desires that the lord alone be glorified and nothing of self be promoted okay so even as some of you have said that you love to preach and teach even as all of us are called to preach and teach it's important that you know um, we follow these guidelines that we have just heard and use a pulpit time to you know preach and teach the truth and the revelations from god's word any questions before we go for our break yes can you pass the mic to him please we just have one minute so um i saw this matter on twitter actually what uh, some baba he uh, some hindu baba he said something about uh, uh, christians so one pastor is there particularly from his uh, last 6 7 meetings on sunday service he is continuously giving reply from the scripture to that baba and that debate is going from both side so is it right or wrong i think uh, instead of highlighting what the baba is saying so that people then people will think oh what the baba is saying is also the son so this preacher is teaching about him so he might be having some truth so let's listen to what the baba is saying and some of them who are weak in their faith or uh, immature or still growing in their faith they can be led away by the baba because you know even the evil one has you know can overpower them in their thinking so what the preacher should do instead of retaliating and fighting and arguing what the baba is saying he can just talk the truth from god's word okay instead of focusing and saying this is what baba said this is what god's word is saying you can just teach the truth people are very smart they can apply the truth for them selves and understand the truth for themselves uh, so mainly what we should do we just ignore them or what no we're not ignoring them right how we're not ignoring the baba we are listening to what the wrong things that he's saying but we are talking about the truth from god's word and we're teaching the truth and we are educating the people on the truth in god's word so that when they are uh the song with the error you know when they face error or the wrong teaching they know how to apply the truth that is what we need to do when we preach and teach okay thank you everyone for uh, joining class have a good break see you after the break